Uh, please, if uh, you could take a sweet uh, from one of the tubs, but don't eat it yet. All will become clear. And welcome to uh, Finding Happiness, Using Positive Psychology in the Workplace. Now, this is very much a build on what you saw from Annetta yesterday. So she talked to a lot, a lot about the big picture of positive psychology and that existentialism around it as well. I will talk much more about tools you can use in the workplace day to day. Um, I'm Mark Hodder, I'm one of the PSMW team. I design and deliver training. That's uh, pretty much what I do. So you know the frame of what you're getting from me, pretty much we've talked a lot about values and who people are and what they do. I am a sticky trainer, that's pretty much it. I try to design training that sticks in your mind. No, no problem, come on in. So if you'd like to grab a sweet from the jar, that you've joined us there and there, but don't eat it yet. So we'll very much be looking at the practical tools of positive psychology. And the good news here is, all of these things are free for you to do. So they're just actions that you can take that are free to do. Now, in the West, we've sort of got a bit of a problem with our thinking that we usually think, when I get this job, when I get this much money, when the mortgage is paid, when I meet this person, then I'll be happy. But what happens when we do get that goalpost? Yeah, it moves back. So what we really want to do is things the other way around. It's be happy first. Be happy first and success will come. We'll set, so we'll follow on. Okay. So that's the whole frame I want you to hold in your mind as we go through this workshop. Now I'm going to talk about lots of different stories and research. I'm not going to have time to give you every nut and bolt of the research. So what I've done is I've linked you to the people. On the slide you'll see pictures of the books and the people that are there behind me and it will say who they are. So if you need and want that research, I like that research, so you may want more, it's there for you. So I won't cover everything in detail. But, and please, questions as we go within the, within the time we've got. I'm gonna get you involved in, uh, in this, because the best thing with positive psychology to it is to do it. So we're gonna do some activities. You'll need a pen and paper, that's all. That's all, I'm gonna be talking to each other. But we're not gonna start <laughs> with positive psychologist as such, we're gonna start with a brain scientist. And we're going to start with John Medina and his brain rules. Now, John Medina uh, says he's used all his expertise in neuroscience to tell us, well, hi, come on in. That's okay. Yeah, no problem. It's confusing on the day we're in here. Uh, so John Medina's brain rules, he found something incredible out with all this high-tech kit. Amazingly, people don't listen to boring things. Okay. <laughs> And here's a typical lesson, typical session. Hi, come on in. If we pass the sweets back as well, that'd be great, guys. We've only just started. You were in the other room. Okay. So take a sweet, please, but don't eat it yet. I've just said we're building on Annetta yesterday with very much practical tools of positive psychology. That's what we're looking at. And here's a neuroscientist. We're starting with John Medina, who's found out something incredible. People don't listen to boring things. After 10 minutes, your attention drops. And then what happens at 40 minutes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you think the bell's coming, I'm out of here. The speaker doesn't suddenly become engaging, okay? <laughs> you're, out, you're like, I'm out of here. So that's what happens. So every 10 minutes or so, we gotta do something a little bit different to keep people's attention. And that's what we'll try and do. And this is what I'd like you to, first little exercise I'd like you to get involved in, please. We know a lot about positive psychology because we ask people about their experience in the moment. And this is the original way a lot of the research was done. So if you would, please, write down the three words there, happy, relaxed, and awake on your piece of paper. I'm going to keep coming back to this. And then give yourself a score as you are right now, right now. So are you happy? One low, ten high. Relaxed, same. Awake. I'm not really expecting to see any ones on awake because you're all still looking at me. <laughs> okay, there we go. <clears throat> Be happy with that. And then in this session then, I'm going to talk to you about would you believe me if I told you that a pot plant could add seven and a half years to your life? <laughs> yeah, good. And that a stuffed, fluffy elephant can improve communication at work. <laughs> what have you come to? Uh, and there's one free act per day 
that can make you 31% more effective and productive at work. Okay, Just one free act. And if you're the boss, if you're the leader, it's a really essential activity for you to do. And I'll come back to that relationship and the impact you have on other people with that, with this one activity. And then we'll finish the session by looking at why 20 seconds uh, and 21 days are essential in changing any habit. I'll explain more of that as we go. But this is the whole deal. Can you imagine how long it took me to get that photo? <laughs> okay, and how it, it took a lot more sweets than you've got here. Um, <laughs> the whole deal is our behaviour matters. Our behaviour. We have to give people that sense. It was great to hear Liz Davis this morning talk, you know, about that period of depression. When we get into a period of depression, the world is bad, I'm bad, the future's dark. We don't believe our behaviour matters anymore. Positive psychology looks at the other way around and says, give people the sense their behaviour matters and things will get slightly better. That's all we're asking people to do. And we'll explain why all that works. So it's really the key, our behaviour matters. And that also overcomes that learned helplessness that Simon spoke about the day before. <coughs> because we give people back the power. You know, if you're in that organisation where the one person controls those 4,000 vehicles, you've got a lot of learned helplessness going on, look into the leader. So it's belief that our behaviour matters towards success. And let's get you talking to each other. So what I'd like to do, just on your pad, just write down before we do this. It's, Annette almost got us to do the exercise yesterday, but then stopped, so I thought we'll do it today. I would like you to write down three things that went well for you in the last 24 hours. Now, let's be clear, we're not trying to impress anybody, and these must be real things that matter to you. Once you've written them down, I'd like you to find somebody else to have a chat with and talk about them. Uh, if you're doing your British thing and saying, I don't know, I just gave you a free sweet, so there's one. <laughs> I haven't let you eat it yet. case to have a chat with somebody else a <coughs> couple of minutes I'll uh, start again Okay, just a few more seconds and we'll wind it up, please. <coughs> okay. We all okay for time there? So, do you have to tell me the thing? So what sorts of things did you say? 
What sorts of things were people saying? If I slept well. Slept well, good. Yeah. <laughs> Made new friends, great. Made new friends, excellent. Is there anything else? Teamwork. Teamwork. Great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. It's, these are things that make that make you happy, and that's the the whole point. Of it. How did it feel to do that exercise? Yeah. Is it something you do regularly? No. Yeah. Here's the science behind it now. Your brain's just gone. Your learning centres have all opened up. You've got a big hit of <coughs> dopamine, the reward, the reward drug in the brain. It's free and it's legal, <coughs> not as prescription version, uh, and some serotonin as well in there, making you feel happier. But if we were to measure your visual field now, your visual field is actually wider. It's a great piece of research from Canada. Your visual field opens, and you're much more likely to see an opportunity in front of you. And you heard yesterday. Um, the first speaker yesterday said about when your body goes into stress and you get and all the cortisol starts in your body and you can't think. It's the exact opposite of this. And it's just such a simple exercise every day that we can do. So I really am going to encourage you. I'll, I'll talk about it more later. I'm going to encourage you, though, that uh, it's so simple and it can help both at work and at home. Because we are going to cover work and home in this, uh, this workshop here. So how do you feel? And it's really important, Emmanuel spoke about it, where we point our attention. And that's what that what well, went well exercise is a lot about. Where are we going to choose to focus? And Annette said it yesterday. I'll choose to focus on the good things even when times are difficult. Because George Miller, back in 1956, he knew then, we've only got about seven, plus or minus two, genius, genius nine, okay? The rest of us, like me, with a two and a bit year old, okay, definitely five things we can focus on at one time. So where are we going to focus that attention? On the good things and make the most, most of them? But I don't want you just to believe me. I want to see if this stuff actually works. So have you seen anything like this going on before? Yeah, there's the two buddies. And there's even somebody in the background getting in on the act. OK, you see that in the main hall. I would love to have a camera here sometimes in the main hall because there's actually whole tables leaning one way. Okay, It's great to see. But let's test to see if it really works. This, this stuff and why it works it's a bit of chaos now in the room but i'd like you to face yourselves one person facing towards the screen please and a partner facing away but looking at your partner so you're in a you're in a pair there no you, well you can stand up if you want to that's fab yes yeah, one of yes, right. You turn this way, Colette. That way. No, no, this way. That you, way. You turn away from the screen. You right. straight towards right. it. That's fab. Okay. No, no, no. That's that's right. That's right. Face each other. Face each other. Everybody is everybody facing somebody. Everybody facing somebody. Good. So you can see somebody's face. Now, best for those facing the screen. Best serious face on, please. I'm going to give you an instruction. I want you to do what is on the slide. Everybody ready? What happened? They laughed. What good did you get? Turn around, guys. Have a look. Yeah. <laughs> Take a seat. Take a seat. <clears throat> Did it just sort of happen? You went, I got a smile. Yeah, you didn't even know you were going to do it, did you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, you know, I cheated. I used a baby. We smile at babies. No, nobody's got the gag in. No, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so there you go. It's, why does that actually work, though? Well, before we find out, um, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you how you feel again, and then I'll tell you how the way it works. Quite a few. <laughs> I'll explain why. I think I would have smiled back anyways. Just because to make her feel more comfortable. 
that's okay. I'll explain what, what's going on. <coughs> now, what's actually happening is the mind and body are the same system. Okay, here. So somebody smiles at you. You have got mirror neurons in your brain. You smile at you, you smile back. We like to mirror other, other people around us. And if you're the boss, you take that feeling into the meeting, how you're feeling, very quickly it will spread. We like it. Our, the front thinking part of our brain is new and modern. Most of our brain is ancient and is still like basically a monkey brain. There's a great book, The Chimp Paradox, by uh, Dr. Steve Peters explains that in that metaphor. But basically the monkey brain is still there and it still sees the boss and the boss is a status, can be a status threat to that. And we all like a bit of status. So it's what's going on. Somebody smiles, you smile back, the mirror neurons fire. So if you go into your meeting taking in something from the previous one that wasn't so good, you've just taken that in and you will impact all the people in the room. And it spread, emotion spreads like secondhand smoke, okay? Just spreads around the room, as you've heard some of the other speakers say as well. So every cell is eavesdropping on your internal dialogue. And we know this from two experiments. First, we'll talk about learned helplessness. Now, these experiments are the 60s and 70s. So they, they've got a, you know, a, they're not the kind of experiments we'd probably do today. But here, Martin Seligman, the founder of positive psychology, has got Alsatians. And he puts the Alsatians into a shuttle box. The shuttle box just means they can stand on one side. They can easily jump a small barrier to the other side. However, he then electrocutes the left side where the Alsatian is standing. Healthy dog just jumps to the other side. But then they saw what would happen if we strap the Alsatian so it cannot move from the left side and electrocute the dog until the dog gives up the fight. Take off the strap and electrocute the dog again. What happens? Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. And in the last workshop, somebody was telling us the same story, same thing is used with training elephants why tame elephants don't run away. They're actually chained with a tiny little chain, but they've learned that they can't go anywhere. The fight's been taken out. And if we've got negative workplaces that take away, that push people into learned helplessness, that's why he termed the, the term learned helplessness. That's how they'll be. And then it doesn't matter that you as a boss go, oh, come on, all be empowered now. People will go, uh, 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 doesn't compute, tell me what to do. So you can't just switch from one to the other. The good news is, when they taught the dog to move again, you can quickly learn that. But humans are a little bit more complex than that. It they, they takes time to relearn those skills. That's what we know about learned helplessness. Why I'm telling you this and the mind body the same system. Same sets of type of experiment, but this time with rats. The rats are given this time a tumor though, and 50% of the rats will live in this experiment, 50% will die in a normal control group. But they then take away, they give learned helplessness to the rats through the electric shocks. When they, the ha rats are helpless, 74% die. Okay, just all that's changed is they don't have control. In another experiment, they give those rats control over the electric shock. Feel the electric shock, press a lever. Okay, they press the lever, electric shock stops. In that experiment, only 24% of the rats die simply by having a sense of control, a sense of control. And we take that to the workplace, more low-graded staff have stress-related illnesses than senior managers. Yet the senior managers, you'd say, would be under more conditions of stress. So your whole body is listening, and your dialogue is eavesdropping into this. But it's important to tell you that positive psychology didn't come from like, oh, let's have a, a happiness idea. It came because Martin Seligman said, We've got thousands of terms for, ne for poor mental health, very few to help people like yourselves perform even better. It's that sense of control. It's that our behavior matters, that whole point of this, this workshop. So we've done that. Yeah, how do you feel? These are a few of the people we'll talk about. <coughs> got Martin Seligman there at the top, uh, top left. And he's the guy who started all of this, really. We've got Ellen Langer, and I'll talk about the plant pot. We've got Sean Aker, who did the What Went Well exercise over here at the bottom right. We've got Carol Dweck, who Neil has already mentioned, and the idea of a, a positive mindset. And we've got Mahali, Chikset Mahali, who I'll talk about in terms of flow. But there's the first one we did. What went well? Three things per day. Get that positive conversation started. 
Now, of course, there is an app for this. So I'll show you the app in a minute. There's an app for everything, isn't there, pretty much. And we recommend you do it this way. I'm sure you all dine exactly like this, <laughs> in black and white, as one of the other groups said. OK, so but we recommend this is a great way to go home. And rather than that conversation, oh, the day I've had start. OK, and I'm going to come to more communication at home. The other way, start it with what went well. It doesn't matter how old your kids are. They can all do that, can't they? You know, what went well for you today? Just those three things. And then you get the double hit, which you heard about this morning. You don't only get the hit from you saying what went well. You get the social connection as well. So make it a routine. I know people now who have been in very bad places and said, how can I change? And you just suggest this exercise, they go home. Now their kids will not let them leave the dinner table unless they've done the what went wells. So kids can have a good impact in this as well. And a few people have told me that schools, there's quite a few schools that are doing this now as well with the kids. And there's the app. It's the iJournal by Sean Aker. And uh, we, we recommend it so it's free, free and easy to use. And it will help you, remind you to do the What Went Wells. I use this exercise every day. I found this, you know, amazingly powerful myself. So I can recommend that as a useful idea. It's the iJournal app, and it's on the App Store, or it's available for Android phones as well. OK. Well, if you haven't got all that, you don't need it, because you can just write it down in a journal. Yeah, brilliant. That's the thing. It's just a reminder to help remember. Um, so let's get you talking to each other again for another couple of minutes. I'd like you to pick an, one of those things off your uh, initial list, and we're going to do some live streaming. So we'll do that in a minute. I'll explain this. But if you just want to get a little bit more juice out of what happened, just ask yourself those three questions. Why? Why does it make you happy? So one of the three things you said that went well. What does it mean to you? And the most important one of all, of course, how do you get more of it? How do you get more of it in your life? The interesting thing here is 15 minutes is enough. You will take all the goodness in 15 minutes. There's no need to go any further than that. We don't need to spend days on it. We're not going to spend 15 minutes here. We haven't got quite the time, but a couple of minutes. However, this equally works. If you've got an unresolved issue in your life that something's happened and you cannot find the meaning in it, this is by another psychologist, James Pennebaker, even post-traumatic stress, writing about it for 15 minutes, not ruminating on it all day, writing about it for 15 minutes also helps you find the meaning in that thing that happened, that event. And within a few weeks, people have very much over the event, even days sometimes, if it's an unresolved issue. But for today, because I didn't bring any tissues with me, um, we'll stick in the live streaming, please, which is, you know, just one of those things off your list. Have a talk with somebody else. Why? What does it mean to you? How do you get more of it? Away you go. Good to see you again. Yeah, Good to see I, yeah. You again. We've met before. Yeah, How's that's it going? Uh, up in Bango. You yeah. did a talk for us before yeah. when uh, the X and Y yeah. generation. Yeah, yeah. Sure great. A bit of that again today. That hasn't sure. gone away. No, just no. Just getting old a bit more <laughs> mouthy. <Yeah. laughs> Fantastic. How are you? Great, thanks. How's it going? You're very good. Yeah, I've got good engaged groups and. Uh, Sounds like it's been a great. Few oh days. yeah, definitely. That was uh, great to have people like yourself, quality and speakers oh, and things we can great. attract. People are really yeah. They're very energised. They're, they're a good group of learners. So. Workshops are really rich. So yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's what we try and do. We try and make sure that we're giving them something. And how's business generally? Good, yeah. good. We're well, part of PSMW, yeah, so that's exactly. very much, uh, this is great. Oh, yeah, we, do, we run a because, change I mean, programme, yeah, so. Yeah, this is, um, these, num these numbers get bigger and bigger every year. Yeah. So, I mean, years ago, Neil struggled to get people to come that's up. That's right, no, that's just right. Here keeping them at the door. That's right. Isn't that great, though? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So that's good. Very good. Yeah, definitely, so we could fill it twice. So you don't the rest of it. Yes. It oh, yeah. I think so. so. You actually did have to sort of have. Oh, we have people waiting. Yeah, the people that's waiting. Fantastic. And, uh, that's fantastic. So, how many years have you been running now? This is the seventh year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it would be very early days. It yeah. is. 
quite a struggle. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's changing the mindset, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, and getting all the word of mouth going. That's it. That's it. Great and the trust yeah, and everything. Exactly. You know, is this any good? Are they telling us yeah, things that are? Wasting my time. Yeah, is it going to help me? Exactly. So, what's your sense of the mood and how uh, well, generally? Well, there's a. We've had a lot of things like local government cuts. My partner who works in a council, she had a £5,000 pay cut herself, so you get that kind of thing. But you, you've got to decide, is this what I want to do? And, uh, you know, so there's all that angst. Yeah, I think so. But, you, you know, when you're making a difference and you can see that difference. Yeah, that's a huge intrinsic yeah. value. Yeah, it? she works for children's services, so she wouldn't want to give that up yeah. for a, just because of yeah, a pay cut. Of course, she won't be alone. No, it happens to exactly. everyone, it's not like, That's right. oh, why me? It's like, well, we're all in this together. Yeah. It just causes them to drop off the work a little bit for a while and yeah. takes the attention off, doesn't it? And it's bringing well, it's people back. It's very distracting. Yeah. That's the challenge it is. of, you know, being, being tasked, yeah. which is, uh, you know, delivering value in some way, yeah. which includes children's services. That's it. Yeah. So that's it. And this is great because obviously I get to do my yeah, flow and joy, don't I? So I'm quite happy that's with that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, not at all. No, no. It's great to see you in the room. So thanks. <laughs> okay. We have to move on, I'm afraid, it's just for time. So again, and this is going to come up time and time again, the power of asking people questions and letting them express themselves and talk about what's gone well for them. It's going to come up time and time again. I'm going to take you through how to give effective feedback, and you're going to find, strangely enough, it's sort of the same. So this positive thing is just about often let other people talk. Oh, you can eat your sweet. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you're having it later, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. So, now why, why did I give you a sweet? That's what you need to know, isn't it? Um, and why did I make you wait? You want to know all these things? Well, the expectation can make it better, and we're certainly doing effective priming. It's exactly the same as the exercise on what went well. You give you the suites, the learning centres and things open up again. And I'll tell you the evidence behind this. Two studies, one with doctors, the other with judges. And I'm going to tell you now, I'm sure nobody in this room is ever in any trouble, but if you are, make sure you're in court just after lunch. I'll explain why in a minute, OK? <laughs> uh, doctors first. Did you, when were you a kid, did the doctor ever give you a lollipop for being good after you'd been? The dentist did, I remember. I, I said the dentist and people looked at me horrified, but they did. Anyway, what if I told you, actually it should be the other way around and we should be given the doctor the lollipop? Because great research coming out of Harvard again, effectively they got to a bunch of doctors together and you've seen House, House MD, the programme where you've got the doctor who makes all these amazing diagnoses and he's able to switch his diagnosis at a moment's notice. Well, one thing we know with doctors is once they've seen a patient, they tend to think that's the symptoms this person's got. And they find it quite hard to switch, even in the face of other evidence, to something else may have happened. By giving the doctors a sweet, which is exactly what they did, just a sweet and not allowing them to eat it to make sure it wasn't the sugar having an impact until they'd done the diagnosis, they found the doctors made their diagnosis 19% faster, it was more accurate, and they had less tendency to stick with the initial diagnosis when there were other causes. So definitely take your GP a lollipop, okay? Now, judges as well, judges, parole board judges, just after lunch, they measured how, how, much, how were they lenient? Did they allow the parole? Would they stop it? And the judges were unaware of the research at the time. This is incredible stuff. They found that for the people just after lunch, they got the parole. The others were much less likely to. And certainly the further you were away from a food time, okay? Food, bre uh, food is a primary reward for your brain. That's one of the things we seek out. I'll leave you to guess some of the others, okay? But that's what our brain does. It seeks out that food. And the judges were unaware. They were horrified when they saw the data. 
but there's nothing we can do about it. We're human. And even once you know, you still can't change it because that part of the brain isn't under our conscious control. So food's a real thing. And if you are feeling hungry about it, you know, it's just get some food because it's distracting you otherwise. But that's well, what it does. Yeah, I know. Take. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, well, again, primary reward. Primary yeah. reward. And and this is the thing. You, your brain is a lot more complex than we think, and a lot the older parts of the brain are in charge. So I just want to keep that in mind. But that's why we gave you the sweets. So effective priming really works. You want people to feel in a good state? Get them in that state. How are you feeling? How are you feeling now? <laughs> well, you don't have to do it. I'm not, it's not a prison camp. So here's our plant pot. And Ellen Langer is pretty well known in the field of psychology as quite a rogue uh, psychologist. And she, what, what happens to people when they go into nursing homes? They go in for themselves on occasion. Yeah. They die. They do. And quite quickly, unfortunately, sometimes. What happens in a nursing home? What, what might be the cause of that? Fabulous. There's nothing to carry on for. Suddenly, all that control, your own home, your own way of doing things, the time you eat is all under your control. Then the next day, it's not. And even sometimes you're told you've got to keep your door open and all these other things. You have no, very little privacy. Ellen Lang, a, an experiment here, just tried, said, we've got to do something different. They gave the upper floor of a nursing home. You know, remember, I'm, I'm I'm cutting through some of the data here. So the nursing home, it gave you upper floor pot plants. And they said, look after these. You position them. You water this plant. You keep it alive. It's your plant. The lower floor, they said, your nurse will choose a plant. Your nurse will place the plant in your room. Your nurse will look after the plant. So all the control is with the nurse. When they went back a year later, and you can read this in the great book, Counterclockwise, if you've got any ideas about you want ideas about aging um, they went back a year later significantly more of the residents in the upper floor were still alive <coughs> because they had that sense of control How can you prove that that's because of that? you'll have to read the book <coughs> they can they can because they did the the full data but I haven't got time to go into every detail of it today but they know it's that sense of control <coughs> give people a sense of control uh, they, me they even measure to the level of measuring uh, the blood levels and uh, what uh, chemical reactions were happening in the body. So, yeah. And you saw this yesterday a little bit, three to one positive. I won't cover it too much, but I do want to say to you, it's three positive interactions to one negative. Okay? Not three to none. This isn't smiley yellow faces. Okay? This isn't just I'm happy. Oh, look at me, I'm happy. You can see through that straight away, can't you? One negative, for example, some of you will know I started out my career flying. You do not fly aeroplanes from a positive psychology point of view. Ah, there's another engine. It'll be fine. Okay? This is going to be a bad thing. So okay. the positive and negative is, a, is in that ratio, three to one. But let's face it, most of the UK probably doesn't even get close to that ratio. Why three to one and why, why, why have we got that? The negative is stronger, and I'll put this to you. Life gives us the negative anyway. It's our job to find the positive. And life does give us the negative anyway because you've got something in your brain called an amygdala, which is your fear centre, and that fear centre is ancient. It's there from when we used to have to think a rustle in the bushes might mean there's a saber-toothed tiger coming to get us, so we better make some action now. So that's always there. And you can motivate yourself through fear, and raising of the, the drug that raises in your body and in your brain is epinephrine. But you know the consequences of that. You've all seen it at work. Burnout, stress, inability to cope. It can be useful in some situations, but the much better drugs, the dopamine, serotonin, the reward drugs, are used by adding the three positive. Now, there is no similar function in the brain to the amygdala for the positive. So you have to build the positive muscle. There's no route through the brain. 
How do we know this actually works? Well, again, you, you may have heard of this as back in 1966, but there was a guy, Charles Whitman, who climbed to the top of the uh, University of Texas and shot and killed, uh, well, shot 33 people, I think 16 were killed. But in his suicide note, he asked to be examined after his death. He knew he would die during the incident. He said, that, I don't know what's happened to me. Something's changed. Nobody can help me. When they did that, they looked at his brain and there was a tumour pressing on his amygdala. Okay? He was basically, his fear sensors were absolutely full on power all the time. So he, that's what caused him pretty much to, to, to take that final action. And nowadays we know that. And when people's behaviour suddenly changes, brain science can do a lot to say, why has their behaviour suddenly changed? What's happening here? And you know, we now can look inside the brain quite well, although it's still very early days. So that's why the three to one. And, and here's the thing I want to give to you today, a practical tool you can take away for your staff if you want to get people into that three to one ratio. Let's imagine you've got a team of 10 people make up sets of cards with each person's name. So you're going to need 10 sets of cards. Write everybody's name on the top of a, of a card. And then each person fills in three qualities they admire about the other people in the team. Okay, three qualities they admire. And of course, because it's three to one, we'll also let you have one thing you'd like them to do more of. And I frame that even that in the positive rather than one thing they should stop. But here's the thing with the one thing they should do more of. You've got to own it yourself before you put it on the back of the form. And what do I mean by that? I mean, if I want to write, Joe should be on time more often. Am I on time? Or am I just writing my stuff on the back of her card? Does that make sense? But the three positive. Now, you don't then do a, the 360 degree thing that some do. They sort of hand you the report and run away. Get everybody to then sit and have a conversation. They give the feedback to each other verbally. They talk to each other and say, these are the three things I admire in you. It's an uplifting experience. Matt, I mean, you've experienced this firsthand. Yeah. So it's an easy exercise, Jane as well, yeah. It's a really easy thing to do. They're doing this in schools. They're doing this in schools. And it's a great story. In the, in the US, they have been doing this a while longer. There's a story of a Marine, unfortunately killed uh, in Afghanistan, came back, and his whole class came to the funeral. The teacher had done this exercise. Every single child still had the positive words that were said about them and still used that as a rock point. So that, these are the things I'm good at. These are the things. So it's a powerful exercise to do. And when a job comes up in work then, you can say, that's the person I know will be energised by this. I know that's the thing they admire. And, and more for ourselves, we get to think, really, they see that in me? So it's a great exercise to do. Can you, uh, can you yeah, sure. <laughs> it's all a merge. Oh, yeah, I'll show you that in a moment. Yeah, that's fab. <laughs> Is he running my workshop again? He knows my workshop's more popular and he just copies it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, if you want the scientific version of your positivity ratio, here it is. Positivityratio.com. This is the website of Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, who, who, who was one of the researchers on the three to one ratio with Marcel Lasada. And it's, this is a great thing to do because you can do this over a number of days and you can see. It's just 10 questions. Did I feel, you remember that list Annette put up on the screen? Awe, love, gratitude. It just asks you, did you feel those things today and in what measure? And then it gives you a score. I'll tell you that you might be surprised by what your positivity ratio is when you first do it. Don't be shocked if it's like 1.5, 1.6 to 1. And even now I do this and I, you know, I'm in, involved in this. And getting to three every day still takes work. You've got to work at it. I mean, I'll come to why we work at it. And I'll just point you on if you want the more science again, Martin Seligman's website, Authentic Happiness. It's the University of Pennsylvania website, so again, we recommend it. Everything on there, there's so many questionnaires, so many things on there. They're all free. 
He is giving them to us to use to, to further this in work. And the exercise I really like on there and recommend is a value survey, VIA strength survey. It's 240 questions, but it will tell you your top five strengths. VIA strengths survey. It's great because it's, it's, I say it's free, you can use it. It will tell you your top five strengths. The way I use that with teams is go into the organization, get everybody to do the survey. Guys, you've been there, haven't you? Uh, so, and then tell people how you use those strengths every day. Tell people how you've used those strengths. Just authentic happiness. I think it's authentichappiness.com, but if you put authentic happiness in, you will get that site. Your team. I would get the team together again. Away day, something like that. Get posters, get the team to make posters of their top five strengths. And then tell other people in the team, not everybody, because you wouldn't want, for a lot of people coming up here, would, you know, to talk to 20 people would just be too much. So break it into small groups and then tell a story about how you use those strengths daily. You get real, again, it's a good buzz exercise to do. And people learn about themselves. And, thank you, you need a five to one ratio at home. Five to one ratio at home, all got that? Yeah. Uh, now this is John Gottman and the Gottman Institute, but I like his colloquial term for what he does, which is the love lab, okay? <laughs> <coughs> Not as it sounds, I'm glad to say, but this is a, a room, a glass, uh, basically like, imagine Big Brother. You take your partner in, it's pretty much set up as a sort of living area, and you go in together, and he says to you, right, have an argument. <laughs> and he just picks away till you find something. We can all argue. It's not that we argue, it's how we argue. And these are his four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, if these four are there, you're well on the way to not being together anymore, effectively. And here's his, this is the stunning statistic. They video the argument as it takes place. And within a three minute conversation, he can predict divorce with more than a 93% accuracy. Okay? Because these four are present. And once they're there, they're, they're difficult to shift unless you start doing the what went well type stuff. Now I like this and I'm gonna go through it because it's good gender bias in this and it's a bit controversial, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but, um, so ladies, ladies, do you start with criticism by any chance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we respond with contempt. So gents, we respond with contempt. So we just give you the one that I've got, you know, sort of thing at home, you go. Neil will come in. Did you put the bin out? I asked you to put the bin out. Did you put it out? I go, no. I, I've got far more important things to do. Football's on, beer. <laughs> no, that's not looking good. So I've just said my time's far more valuable than yours. It's all contempt. Nia gets back into defensive. Well, am I running this house on my own? Okay. So then, and every man's got one, every single man, a shed, a garage, a greenhouse, <laughs> right? That's it. We disappear, we hide, and we just stonewall it out. And that's the, that's the four uh, horsemen in effect. Now, there's one thing, there's one thing that's the saviour of all this, which is, if you can still see why you got together with that person, if you can still find that initial spark, you're going to be okay. okay. But the best thing to do to counteract these is just the what went wells. That's all it is. It's just the what went wells. And if the other person is having, does get into a negative cycle, never offer any advice, don't offer how to solve it, just the answer is, poor baby, they're there. That's it, that's it. And then shut up, let them carry on, they'll be fine. And then when they're okay, what went well? So that's John Gottman, it's great stuff. Well worth a read if, uh, if you want to improve your relationships. That one free act then, one free act per day that you can do as a leader. And this is the one, I just really would like you to do this at summer school this week with somebody, you know, you could do this every day. Just give one piece of positive and authentic praise. That's it. Authentic, specific. And I'll come on to more about how we do praise. But just that one thing. That is, uh, that's the one that raises everybody. Because again, it, it gives me, oh, right, you appreciate what I do. 
So then I feel good and I feel like my behavior mattered and the upward spiral begins. Just that. And we'll talk more about how to give it. Oh, that reminds me, which is why I put the slide in. Can you just put your hand under the front of your chair, please? See if there's anything there. You might find something blue tacked to your chair. No, nothing there? <laughs> okay. Yep. That's, uh, and uh, let me tell you now, you, you better be on a roll here because the last group, they were two winners. So, uh, that's up to you. So, random acts of kindness, random acts of kindness are there. You've had my random acts of kindness, so I have no idea who's going to sit in those seats. Uh, you're welcome to the scratch cards. Random acts of kindness you can, is an easy thing to do. So, here's the deal, though. Who gets the bigger hit from a random act of kindness of positive emotions? Who do you think? The giver. And that's it. Yeah, we don't do it, do it. And they have to, right, there's one deal. They have to be conscious acts of kindness. I can't go, oh, I held the door open for somebody earlier. That counts. No. <laughs> right? No. No. So it's all about that. What is it? And it can be free. It can be a word, a thing, whatever it is. But it needs to be something conscious. How'd you feel? Yeah, do you scratch card first? Yeah, I haven't had anybody say yet yeah, really bad because they didn't give me the scratch card. No, that's right. And then we just carry on with a bit more on the feedback side. So we must praise effort, not ability. This is, this is Carol Dweck, Mindset. She gave children jigsaw puzzles to do. And, you know, we've had this sort of 20 years or so of building people's self-esteem without really anything to build it on. And she saw this in action. So she gave the children jigsaw puzzles, really easy. They did the jigsaw puzzle, and then she'd say, you're so clever. You're a natural. You didn't really have to try, did you? And then she said to the same children, do you want another jigsaw puzzle? Do you want the easy one again? Or would you like a more difficult one? The children who were told they were clever said, I have the easy one again, thanks. Because they'd had a success, they'd got the reward and praise, and they thought, I don't want to fail. And that's where many of us get to. It's easy to get there in a career, isn't it, as well? Go, I'm success where I am, I don't want to fail, so I'll stay here. And that's one of the downsides of thinking the success mindset, which is on the left. On the other side, is all that thing, Neil spoke about it, it's all effort, there's no talent. I'll let Matthew Syed reveal all that on Friday, but there is no such thing as talent. It's your hard work, it's your effort, it's the hours you've put in. You must have worked hard, you planned well, look at the result. Tell me more about what you did. Again, asking questions, let the other person speak. That's the deal to all this. And I'm gonna roll straight on because these two are related. This is Shelley Gable. There are four ways to respond to somebody. Somebody comes into your office. I've got promoted. It's great, I got promotion. Active, destructive. I wouldn't want that. That's a whole load more stress. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out. Then there's passive, destructive. They walk in, tell you that. I got promoted, isn't it great? Oh no, listen what happened to me. Take it all away, you know, straight away again. Then there's, there's the one I call my mum. I phone her up, mum, I've just saved the world. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one where you say, well done, well done. What, what did I do well? It's, there's, no, there's no extra added. Specific and authentic. Active, constructive. Person comes in, the only thing to do. Enthusiastic support and ask for details. I got a new job. Wow, how did you do that? What was the interview like? What's the job? What's it going to be like? It's the way to respond. And that leads all back to flow. Mahali took second with Harley's idea that the challenge of your job must match your skill level. Ever been busy and bored at work? You're down the bottom end there. The, the work's too easy. You've moved on. Yet we leave people in the same job for years and years and years and think that they'll get that. We can help by just raising the challenge at a reasonable level. If we raise it too high, we're up in anxiety. 
And his, this book was actually called Overcoming Anxiety and Boredom to begin with. But flow has become the, the, the watchword for this. And eventually we reach those ideas of autonomy, mastery and purpose. What do I want to do here? And the idea is to keep people in that flow. Which tells you why I've been asking you to look at this, uh, the happy, relaxed, awake. There's another app for it, which is Mappiness by London School of Economics. It'll do what we've done here. It'll ask you. I don't think it's going to be one for you, Colette. But uh, it'll ask you to do that. It's Mahali Chiksek Mahali's idea. He started out with pages. You all remember them, yeah? Great. He'd page you eight times a day and say, how are you feeling now? Okay. And then he'd find out what, what worked and what didn't. When did you sense flow? Yes, he did. He did page you even at those times. <laughs> People didn't enjoy being paged, but they quite enjoyed the activity they were involved in. Uh, so that's how we found out what's flow for individuals. What's flow? You can use this yourself. I use it and it tells you where you find that flow in life. If you've got people around you, you say, but I don't know what I enjoy. Here's how to help them find it. So you might be surprised to find that I quite enjoy doing this and get quite a big hit of flow from it. <laughs> However, my biggest flow activity without any shadow is gardening, which makes my mum laugh a lot because I hated gardening when I was a kid. My mum's a great gardener. I hated it when I was a kid. So she always smiles at that little piece of research on myself with the app there. So that's why I ask you to do it. Why do this positivity thing, though, this, this rose-tinted glasses? Well, we know from nuns, it's quite difficult to get 90 years of research on anything, so it's nuns, the journals of nuns. All kinds of evidence of the data, again, people who ask me for the data, you'd have to have a look at the data itself for everything. But they looked at the one significant difference in how long they lived. And that one significant difference, whether they got a positive outlook, or a negative one. Ten years difference in lifespan by what's written in the journals. Okay? And again, that's all the evidence base is there for that. So do you think in the morning, do you wake up and can you see the positive in the day? That's all you have to do. Your mind will start to see more of it. Yeah, I think we've just about got time for this. So just quick list. The three to five non-essential ways, recent ways you spent money. Um, well, yeah, any really will do. It's, it's okay. I mean, recent's fine. <laughs> no, not necessarily. They may not be recent. Excuse me. Okay, yeah, go on then, put that in. I'll ask you what it is in a minute. So, what sort of things have we got on the list? Jelly babies, I like it. Swimming. Swimming, okay, great. Skydiving. Alcohol, okay. Skydiving, Sky fantastic. Mine was the Starbucks that I bought when they give free coffee out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> okay, good. Were you with other people when you did it? Yeah. Yeah, that might be why. <laughs> uh, any, anything else? Any different things? Oh, rugby match, my first rugby, rugby match. match. Fab. Great. And look, you obviously didn't enjoy it. Look at your face. No. <laughs> shoes. Yeah, that's why I put shoes on there. Fishing kit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah. But you're on the track now. You're on the track. The deal is here, this is from Mahali, except Mahali's research as well is, did you spend your money on doing things or did you spend your money on having things? When we spend our money on doing things, we get a massive boost of positivity. When we spend it on having things, we get a little spike and then a drop. Okay? The shoes soon wear off. The new car, we've all done it, haven't we? You get your new car, oh, this is great. Six months, oh, that's nice. Yeah, the mind moves on, the mind adapts to things. Sorry, can I, can I quickly ask a question? Here? Yeah, sure. You mentioned your, your obsession, is, your, your interest is gardening. Yeah, yeah. So would be buying a fork, would that be buying a 
playing a thing or buying a that would be doing an activity because it's related. I'm going to use it to yeah, do so something. That's yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's fab. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's doing. That's doing something. Because you do have a set point of happiness. You have got a genetic set point, and I'm glad to say it's only 50%. Otherwise, this workshop would be pretty pointless, wouldn't it? No matter where it is, you have then got a choice. You've got intentional activities you do, and you've got circumstances. Really, there's only a couple of circumstances that cause us big problems and that's noise we never adapt to noise so if you live near a set of traffic lights or something like that or a train going by you might think you adapt but you don't and the other circumstance actually is commuting we weren't built for it it's quite it builds up a lot of stress so the shorter your commute the better as the two things that really matter the intentional activities an ice cream will give you an immediate yes i'm happy give us the immediate i'm happy but it won't last Doing, doing, yeah, sure, <laughs> but it's sort of having, you're having the ice cream, but it doesn't last long, it's hedonistic, it's a hedonistic pleasure. But what, what lasts is doing things, especially with other people. If you're eating your ice cream with other people, that's even better, it's a little bit better. But if you're actually doing an activity like the rugby match, bingo, these are the things that matter. I'm just going to finish with these, this concept then, 20 seconds and 21 days. To change anything, we have to get in these, these two things right. We are a bundle of habits. That's all we are. Our brain's a big bundle of habits. How do I know that? A baseball hitter, a cricketer with a fastball towards the... The fastball comes down 90, 100 miles an hour. You've only got 0.3 of a second to react. The conscious mind doesn't react for 0.5 of a second. So who's in charge? The older parts of the brain. To change any activity, when you do something new, it's difficult, isn't it? But you can drive to work on autopilot. That's because you've burned into a much more ancient part of the brain, the process, called the basal ganglia. Okay, so that you burn in that process to there. And then it's automatic, you just do it. And that's why whatever we want to do, we want to exercise, we've got to make it easy to exercise. We've got to bring down the activation time, 20 seconds. So this particular researcher wanted to learn the guitar, but he was addicted to the TV. He'd go in at night, go, I will play my guitar today. But then he'd just end up picking the TV remote that was right there and putting the TV on, not playing his guitar. What did he do? Took the batteries out of the TV remote and hid them around his house. It then took him more than 20 seconds to turn the TV on. Same with any diets and things. Martin Seligman's research diets, I'm really sorry to tell you, they don't work. So basically you need to change your lifestyle and the way you live. That's all that really works. If you've got a food that you really like, leave it in the shop. Because I pretty much guarantee most of you live more than 20 seconds from a shop. So you'll go, I want, oh, it's not here. And then you'll find something else to do. This same researcher, Sean Aker, also had trouble with going to the gym. So he slept in his gym kit. Then he'd roll out of bed in the morning and go to the gym. Now he does, he, no, it's clean gym kit. And he does say, he does say, that's why he's still single, but at least he's fit and single, okay? But there we go. Uh, so if you want to exercise, put your exercise bike in your front room in front of the TV, you know. Or if you've got a problem with spending, as per confessions of a shopaholic, you've seen this? She freezes her credit card in a block of ice. It's going to take more than 20 seconds to chip that baby out. And then we'll find out if the clothes really are essential. <laughs> okay. But it's putting that 20 seconds in our way putting that 20 seconds in our way uh, and just to finish by mentioning these other two things two activities that really help with positive psychology mindfulness it doesn't have to be meditation you can do waking mindfulness as well but being aware of how you feel so you go I love that I didn't like it why what was going on being aware of your emotions and impacts on other people it's actually approved by NICE now as, as more effective than many of the antidepressant drugs. Yeah, yeah, was, Moira probably told you that. Yeah. Moira, and I really encourage you, especially if it's outside your comfort zone, to go and experience meditation. There is nothing woo-woo about it. Professor Simon uh, Mark Williams, Oxford University, is the person who's, you know, uh, has had the research done and it really works to quiet your mind. The other one then, exercise. 
can't just emphasize it enough. And I'm going to finish by coming right back to John Medina, the brain scientist. 10,000 steps a day is what we need to do. Easy in my job, I just walk up and down in front of people a lot. But park the further away in the car park and walk that bit further into work, whatever, just up your number of steps, walk up the stairs. Just by doing this, just by doing this, cuts your risk of Alzheimer's by 50%. Okay, just 10,000 steps a day. That's all researched in, in his book. But here's the even more stunning thing. This is right fresh brain science from a guy called David Eagleman. When they found people who've died now and they're researching the brain, they've, opened, they've done the brain, looked at the brain, and they found inside okay, the brain riddled with Alzheimer's. Yet the person had no symptoms of Alzheimer's at all during life. Nothing at all. And why? Because they were active, they still had control and a positive outlook. That's what the research is pointing us towards. So for a happy, long life, rose-tinted glasses are a good thing. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Did we get any winners on the scratch cards? No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, enjoy the rest of summer school. Hope that was all right. Thank you.